New Year, new Liam Neeson movie, same set of particular skills. Let's talk about Blacklight. Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm talking to you about Blacklight, a new Liam Neeson movie that's coming to theaters on February 11, 2022. If you've seen a Liam Neeson movie, I think you have a general idea of what this movie is like. So the film is an action intrigue thriller that stars Liam Neeson doing what he does best, talking seriously, fighting when he needs to, and kind of just generally being the good guy. Uh, but that being said, my hot take is I think you should probably pass on it. I love Liam Neeson movies. They're definitely fun and entertaining. If this is kind of what you, if this is what you're waiting for, then you might enjoy it. But for me, I thought it had a decent setting, uh, some intrigue, and I liked Liam Neeson, but the story had some flaws, the film had some CGI action, and overall it just felt a little too jumbled and didn't really come together in the end, and the ending itself was a little bit too convenient. So ultimately, I didn't love it as much as I was expecting to. You know, I, I really like a good Liam Neeson movie. I love Taken, I love Cold Thread or whatever, Cold Vengeance, whatever that movie was. Like, I really like Liam Neeson movies. This one just didn't really do it for me. So I'm going to tell you a little more about the film, a few things I liked, a few things I didn't like, and go into the ending. So as you can imagine, there will be spoilers. If you don't want to know what happens in the film, um, and there are some so there's some big revelations that occur, turn this off now, go check it out. It's available in theaters, and then come back and hear my thoughts. Um, but if you're ready for to hear more about this mission and Liam Neeson's secret role, let's keep going. So in Blacklight, Liam Neeson is kind of a fixer. He's an off-the-books government operative that kind of does jobs for the director of the FBI that need to get done but aren't necessarily of the most legal variety from like intimidating people to maybe breaking and getting some information like he does things under the cover of like the FBI needs this but they're not the most legal now that being said he has a code of ethics it's Liam Neeson he's not going to be this bad person he won't kill anyone. He generally believes he's doing the right thing. He generally believes he's helping people. But what he finds out later is that his boss, although he is doing generally okay things, his boss is doing some very bad things. And that drags him into this overall kind of conspiracy mess that forces him to kind of make a choice and come to terms with some of the things that he has done. So things I liked about this movie. The first is the setting. Like, look, it's set in DC. I love a good DC movie. And although the film is very lightly set, like there are some scenes that take place in dc i think most of the movie was filmed elsewhere i think melbourne uh but you know it's generally supposed to be dc and they do a pretty decent job of kind of making it look like that um but it's not just kind of a geographic setting like some of the actual places where things take happen are pretty cool there are some really nice apartments that are great like venues to then get destroyed when liam neeson does his liam neeson thing uh, there's a really cool like modern looking apartment that's like very industrial looking that gets destroyed and this overall, there's some just really nice locations that you get to experience as Liam Neeson is trying to track down the answers to this overall question. The second thing I love is Liam Neeson. Look, like, he's a lot of fun to watch. He's really smooth. He has just this kind of persona and this aura about him that is fun to watch. And if you, if you like Liam Neeson movies, like he is in this movie, he is doing his thing. This movie had a little bit more flaws than I expect in a lot of Liam Neeson movies, but it's still cool to see him up and still doing it and still kind of redoing his persona now. I don't know, at this point, maybe I'd like to see him go a little bit more I don't know, off the rails, maybe be a bad guy. He seems to have this very specific character he plays. But if you like that, you'll like him in this movie. And the last thing I liked is there is some decent action in this movie. I mean, it's an action thriller, so you expect there to be good action. Not all the action is good. I'm going to go into that in a second. But there are some really good car chases. There's some exciting uh, car sequences that happen. And there's some in-depth fight sequences and some in-depth action sequences that are enjoyable even though there are a little, there are some flaws in them. So, things I did not like about this movie. The first, this is a weird thing for me to say after I just praise it, but the action. Uh, I think that's actually the biggest issue of this movie. You know, the, the political intrigue is interesting and the, the thriller aspects are kind of uh, interesting. They're a little over the top. I'm going to go into that in a second. But the action itself, when you finally get into that, like Liam Neeson doing what he does best, it is not that impressive. I mean, there's just a little, there's just little issues here and there. Like for one, during the gunfights, they're pretty clearly CG. I mean, they're they're decent CG, but you can tell that these are CG gunfights. And I expect a movie like this caliber to have a little bit better action uh, in that respect. But then also what happens is when they are shooting the guns, there are these like light flashes that happen that like cover the whole screen, which is very distracting. And also the camera just like jolts every time a gunshot happens. And it is very disoriented. I mean, I think it's there to like 
make you feel like, oh, this is like high action. But for me, it just kind of gave me a headache because every single gunshot, it would jump like that. And it would just, it felt artificial. It felt uh, like it was trying too hard, essentially. Like, I wish they would have just gone with some more practical effects and made the gunfire scenes more exciting because they, that's what was happening, not because of these effects that happened after. And there was also some other effects. There's some explosions that are CG. I mean, overall, the, the CG is is good, although it's 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 pretty clear it's CG. It's it's at least not the most distracting. And also, uh, the hand to hand combat is pretty slow and deliberate. Like I don't know if it's if if they were just trying to be extra careful or if Liam Neeson is maybe uh, not able to move as fast as I mean. Look, he's been doing this for a while, long time. It would be perfectly understandable. But when the fight scenes happen, it is fairly clearly choreographed and a little bit slower than I was expecting. I was hoping that maybe there would be some bigger action. Um, and, and so, you know, overall the action itself was just a little bit of a disappointment. The second thing I did not love, and this is kind of related to the, the CG effects in the action. There is like this techno glitch effect that happens occasionally, like something, it'll, it'll be like a glitch in the matrix kind of thing. Like they will be saying something and then there will be this like distortion that happens like in the camera, kind of what you'd expect in like any sort of spy thriller or anything that involves like satellite imagery, you would expect to have like some sort of weird messed up aspect. But this movie doesn't have any of that. This movie isn't about like secret surveillance. This movie isn't about like Liam Neeson being watched. And so it was just really weird to have that effect occur because nothing about this was like a techno thriller. Like this was a bread and butter type of political thriller where bad things are happening, but it's not computer hacking. And so it was really weird to have that effect. Like, I wasn't sure if I wasn't getting something. Maybe I wasn't, but uh, it felt like that was an effect in a different type of movie. This, this, was, this was more of a straightforward, like, political action thriller. And that effect just was very distracting because it, it wasn't super consistent. It, would, it happened maybe, like, six times in the movie. And every time I saw it, I was like, why is that happening? Like, is there something I should know? Is, there, is someone getting hacked? Is there going to be some sort of, like, EMP that happens? Never did. It was just off. Uh, the third thing I did not love, and this is... I feel like this movie just kind of hits all my pet peeves. The third thing I don't love was some of the writing. I mean, there were some very obvious monologues and dialogue that happens. I mean, there's a lot, there's some cliche action phrases, some cliche kind of like patriotic phrases and things like that that occur. You expect that in an action movie, although I don't love seeing that. Like, I like it when writing's a little bit less clear, less kind of on the nose. And, and the thing that really kind of bugged me was that it does this thing that I don't like where it tells you the obvious answer that you all knew. Um... You know, like I, I, the 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 FBI director is explaining to his goons at some point, like, you know, and then someone very close to me, uh, or like someone very close to me, like betrayed me, or like someone very close to me, someone who I care very much about, has now become a thorn in my side. And you all know who he's talking about because the movie is about Liam Neeson's character, Travis Block, kind of starting to investigate. He doesn't have to say it, and he's like, essentially, he's like, you know, it's Block. And like, yeah, we, we know that. We got that from what you said. You don't need to then say it out loud. And then there was just some more very obvious conversation that occurred in that meeting that felt like it was spoon feeding the audience. I, I don't like when that happens. I don't like when writing is like that. I like it when it makes you kind of come to some conclusions that you all know because we're watching a movie, like you're, you're paying attention. Like you don't need to have everything spelled out for you. So again, sorry, this is kind of hitting my pet peeves, but it is what it is. This is these are things that uh, I don't love. So the last thing I did not love is the story, and that's partly just kind of the the way it develops, like some of the plots and things like that are just a little bit too easy to come up with, easy to kind of like come to those conclusions, and also the the ending itself feels very convenient given like what happens. So let me go to the ending now. If you don't want to know what happens in this film, turn this off because the ending is pretty crazy, uh, and it has some of the things I don't love. So let's keep going. So Liam Neeson kind of has this epiphany about like the work he's doing, about how he's actually helping a bad person. Like, I don't know how he didn't realize that because he knows the director of the FBI pretty well. They they served together. The director of the FBI is his character, Gabriel, uh, and Liam Neeson and him served. Liam Neeson's character, Travis, is trying to bring in this I don't know, rogue operative. He's, he was a deep cover operative that kind of like went off the rails. So, Lee, so Liam Neeson's character is trying to bring him in. He's trying to like get him back into the fold so that they can kind of fix uh, what's wrong with him and get him back kind of healthy again. So he's he has good motivations for what he is doing, even though he is kind of ruthless in how he's tracking this person down. Um, 
but eventually he finds out that uh, uh, he finds out that this agent Dusty is defecting because of some of the work that he had to do, and we, we don't know exactly what it was, but we find out that he was part of this secret uh, FBI project called Project Unity, which basically was like killing civilians in the name of you know peace and patriotism. Uh, he, he he talks about how they were killing innocent civilians and how he can't do it anymore. And so Liam Neeson has this epiphany of like, oh my gosh, like we're doing bad things. And he realizes that what he was doing is kind of supporting Project Unity, although not directly. He was never directly involved in it, but what he was doing was kind of like supporting that and also supporting Gabriel, who implemented this kind of like secret program. So Liam Neeson is shocked about this and he starts to kind of try to dig up information about this project. But while he's digging, his daughter and granddaughter just disappear. Like he goes to their apartment. They're not there. He tries to call their phone. Their phones have been disconnected. He finds out his daughter like abruptly quit from her job. So he's a little bit distraught, as you'd expect. And also, his boss's goons start trying to kill him, which, again, is not good for him. Uh, but luckily, it's Liam Neeson, so he's prepared. He kind of outsmarts them and goes over to Gabriel's house. When he's there, he confronts him and is like, give me everything about Project Unity. And Gabriel apparently has all that information in just a safe in his house. Doesn't seem like the best way to store that information on like an unencrypted pen drive. Again, not on like an unencrypted flash drive. Not the best way to store any of this information, but I guess that's what it is. So he gives Travis or Liam, I'm just calling Liam Neeson. It's easier that way. He gives Liam Neeson this flash drive. And as, he, as he's looking through this, these files, Gabriel just kind of like slips away. Like, I don't know why Liam Neeson didn't tie him up. Like he's basically threatening his life, but Gabriel just kind of like goes away. And while he, after he gets out, he runs to the gate and his goons are there. Uh, there's two kind of main goons that we've seen. They they do a lot of dirty work. But now we have two extra goons, two extra like nameless goons that are all kind of come towards the house. So Liam Neeson sees this, but they don't attack really quickly because it gives him enough time to like set up some defenses, which didn't seem like a smart move. Like they probably should have like advanced very quickly before he had a chance to set up. Again, it's fine. So he gets everything set up. He like starts, he pulls out a pipe so water's on the ground. He like, uh, he shuts off some of the lights and shuts off some of the breakers and gets gets ready for this fight. So remember how I said that there were like two nameless goons that just appeared right at this moment for this specific encounter? Well, they are the first two to like go into this house and they are the first two to die. And Neeson takes them out really quickly. It's very like red shirt, like Star Trek red shirt. They essentially should be wearing red shirts, although they're wearing like fatigues and like uh, SWAT type gear. But they are just gone. The other two goons, they're a little bit uh, more, uh, they're a little bit more experienced, they're a little more savvy. They have a nice fight with Liam Neeson. This is actually a pretty decent fight. Like this, um, this one is a little bit involved. There's a little bit of gunplay and also, and he also has to manage both of them at the same time while avoiding the hazards that he's created in this house. But during this fight, one of them just basically demolishes this wine cellar, which made me very sad because like it was a lot of wine, oh, wine that was destroyed. It was a pretty sad scene because he just blew up this entire wine cellar, wines everywhere. But also, this is where it had that 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 like flashing light and shaky cam thing that was really, really disorienting for me. But what Liam Neeson does eventually is he lures them both in the kitchen, which is now filling with water. Because remember, he pulled out that pipe, uh, and during the fight, he grabbed like a, a light fixture and like put that in the water. But it was okay because he had turned off the breakers. Remember, he turned off the breakers for the lights, so he, no one got shocked. But when he finally, um, but when he finally lures these people into the kitchen, he turns on the breaker. He's luckily off the ground, and they just get shocked. I guess maybe the code doesn't require arc fault breakers in the kitchen. I guess it's a good thing for him because they get shocked. They're done. He turns the breaker back off and leaves the house. So what happens next is he starts looking at these files on this flash drive and he sees a video of Dusty. Dusty was the agent that he was trying to turn earlier who told him about Project Unity and then was then killed by those goons. And Dusty is talking about his assignment where he is deep cover um infiltrating becoming close to this like political I, I don't know if she was a like a senator or just a, a political kind of like activist named Sofia Flores who he his mission was to get close to her but 
he developed feelings for her and you could tell in the video that like they asked you know did you consider him her your girlfriend he's like yes i did and you can tell that he like actually had real feelings for her she was killed by uh gabriel's two goons pretty early in the film you don't really know exactly why like you just saw that she was in this political rally dusty was there but you didn't know who he was and then and she got an uber ride home was subsequently hit by a car and hit and run and there were no witnesses no nothing like everything just kind of like was flipped under the rug so you find out that dusty was like a deep operative and then the person that he was trying to become close to was killed which must have shaken him clearly that was what shook him that's what caused him to like want to come clean and like clear his conscience about project unity because he was also a member of project unity so he was doing this kind of stuff as well liam neeson wants to get the fbi director to you know admit this and, and talk about project unity so the fbi director later gets into a car starts driving who do you think is driving the car? It's Liam Neeson. Of course, this is like a scene in most of his movies where he has to kind of get close to someone. He is the driver. Uh, the FBI director didn't look. The FBI director's guards didn't check to see who was driving. It's okay. Uh, so he's driving. He tells the Gabriel, like, you have to come clean or I'm going to come clean for you. So Gabriel eventually, you know, is, breaks the grip, gets out of the car, grabs a gun. Um, and Liam Neeson also has a gun because he's Liam Neeson. And so they get into a little very quick firefight. And during this firefight, Liam Neeson shoots him through the window of the door that he's hi hiding behind. A little bit surprised that the FBI director's, you know, official car isn't bulletproof. But, you know, I guess maybe they, you know, budget cuts. Who knows? But he gets shot in like broad daylight. Like they're in a city and he's having a gunfight with the FBI director. He gets shot. No one like runs in. No one calls for help. No one like pulls their own gun to stop this. Everyone just kind of like sits back. No one interrupts. And he comes around and like picks the FBI director up and puts the gun to his head and like basically says like you're gonna tell them what happened. You're gonna come clean about Project Unity or I'm gonna end you. Again, not a good thing for him to do because he's in the middle of the public. Like he's basically threatening to kill this person. Uh, and then the FBI director, like, all of a sudden has this, like, epiphany moment where he's like, you want to put a bullet in your old friend? Please do. You'd be doing me a favor. It was weird. Like, all of a sudden, he's like, now the weight of everything I've done is on me, and I just want this to end. He had never had that before. He was, like, fighting tooth and nail to, like, protect Project Unity and kind of keep it going. He thought it was, like, this great patriotic thing, even though it was horrible like he thought it was this like wonderful thing to protect america and now all of a sudden he's like oh you know what you're right i was doing bad it was a really quick turn i didn't love it like he should have just he should have said something like oh you want to put a bull on me well you can't stop that like you can't stop this project like this is protecting america like there will be another director who will do that. like something like that not like oh now i'm like now i uh i realize everything is bad and i'm so overcome with everything i've done like you should just end me Liam Neeson doesn't shoot him because that would probably be murder and that's not good even if you're trying to expose this conspiracy that is definitely not a good thing to do but he doesn't shoot him the director agrees to like come clean and then you fast forward and you see like a news story about how there was this like FBI plot that was unveiled and the person who unveiled it was this reporter that Dusty, who Liam Neeson was trying to, to kind of capture earlier, had been working with very briefly, and then who Liam Neeson worked with eventually after he found out about Project Unity. So it seems like together, they exposed what happened. The FBI director got caught. He went to jail, I guess. And then Liam Neeson pulls up to this beautiful house. It, some time has passed, apparently. Uh, he gets out of the car. He sees his daughter and his granddaughter. They run up. Everyone's happy. Everyone, you know, loves each other. All the problems that Liam Neeson and his, his daughter had have been fixed. There were some issues earlier um, because of his line of work. It was very intense. He was kind of like always on guard. As you'd expect, if you're like a fixer, he was always on guard. He was always kind of like try security conscious. Um, but apparently now everything's fine. And that's it. Like, that's that's the end. I don't know, Liam Neeson, even though he was doing good things, he shot the FBI director in public. I don't think you can just do that and be okay, even if you're trying to expose bad government practices. 
but that is black light again uh i guess maybe the the name of the film is to kind of like expose the darkness you know that kind of stuff and that's what liam Neeson was doing i guess to be fair he did expose this horrible program so maybe they just wanted to kind of push under the rug like Let's not explore why he shot the FBI director because he was trying to expose this program that is terrible and doing horrible things. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe maybe everything's kind of swept under the rug. But that's Blacklight. Like I said, it's a Liam Neeson movie, but it has, I think, more flaws than I was expecting. So overall, I think it's a pass. But you know what? If you like this type of movie, if you want to see it, hey, check it out. You'll probably enjoy it. Like it has, it has some intrigue. It has Liam Neeson. It has some kind of fun situations and some, you know, conspiracy type stuff. So check it out if you're interested, but that's just my take. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. And please check out my other content. I've got other reviews, interviews, unboxing videos, and recommendations. Thank you.